Why is an app that limits you to 10 undos and a canvas that only goes up to 2,364 by 1,773 and has a barren interface my favorite Android app? Part of it has to do with the hit or miss nature of a lot of the Android apps that are available to me, but part of it has to do with how much I appreciate what they pack into that minimal, sleek interface. This quest for what is my favorite Android app started a couple months ago. After I finished my Procreate tutorial, I wanted to do a drawing on Android tutorial, kind of in the same vein, a couple hours long, go through a couple projects, but I had to ask myself, what is my favorite Android drawing app? And the conclusion I've come to is it is definitely Infinite Painter. But why? What is it about this app? Let's start with the core of how I work, what I do 90% of the time when I'm drawing. One, I need a brush tool. I need a quick way to change between those tools and a way to change the color and the size of that brush. Of course, I'm also going to need an eraser and a quick way to undo. If I can do these things quickly and efficiently, I'm 90% of the way there to liking your app. And when I look at this interface, that is exactly how it's laid out. And that's pretty much all that's on the screen. They do throw in a smudge tool and brush opacity as well, which is kind of nice. But here's what really kind of pushes is this minimal interface over the edge for me. Since I'm changing my brush size and color a lot, it makes it really easy to do that. Dragging my finger back and forth while holding down on the brush size changes the brush size on the fly without bringing up extra interface cruft. I could do the same thing with opacity. If I want to sample a color, it's really easy. I just drag the color swatch down onto the color that I want to sample, and now that's the color that I'm drawing with. Again, I don't have to jump into an interface to do that. I can, but I don't have to. And all the other tools are tucked nicely into this one little icon. Transforms, fills, gradients, the selection tools, guides, shapes, symmetry, and even perspective tools. And how these tools handle their minimal settings are also done very well. If I turn something on, like the paint bucket tool, the icon shows up underneath the tool icon on the right hand side so you know it's active. And it does this for every tool that you select. I know I'm on the paint bucket tool and if I want to turn it off, I just tap on that icon. I don't have to jump back into that big menu again to do it. In the upper left hand corner, there's a little wrench and if I want to change any of the settings that are associated with any of the tools I'm using at any given time, I can do that as well too. Also, when you've selected a tool, it changes the defaults of the other tools on the screen as well. So if I'm on the paint bucket and I tap anywhere, it works just like a paint bucket. It fills in that color. But if I grab a brush and the paint bucket is active, well now I am drawing a fill shape. And pretty much every tool in the settings has this kind of added feature to it. Or I could select the eraser and I could erase a fill section as well. Throughout my time with Painter, I was really impressed by how minimal everything in the interface really was. And at first it looks really simple. In fact, it looks too simple, but as as you dive in and start to learn the tools, you can see how much complexity is packed in there. So that's why I like it. But what about other apps out there, Brad? Those are good too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like what about Sketchbook? I personally like the way Painter handles layers better. I can easily slide my layers in and out, turn them on and off. In Sketchbook, I'm always accidentally selecting the layer with the palm of my hand. That drives me nuts. That single thing alone has pushed me far away from Sketchbook. I can turn off the entire interface, but then I've got to toggle it on to change my brush or change my size or change my color, and I waste a lot of time toggling that interface on and off. Okay, how about Artflow? A lot of people are buzzing about Artflow lately. Artflow checks almost every single box that Painter does. It is a great app, and it is a very close second. And with their latest update, they've pretty much borrowed their entire interface from Procreate over on the iPad. So if you really want Procreate on Android, Artflow is a good way to go. In fact, I think I like the brushes better in Artflow than the ones you can get and download in Infinite Painter. For me, what it really comes down to, and the only thing that holds Artflow back, is its fluidity, the canvas. When I'm zooming in and out, when I'm pinching and rotating, when I'm panning from side to side, it feels slow, it feels sludgy, it feels like you're stuck in the mud. Whereas Infinite Painter, it's smooth as silk and feels really good, which other apps like Sketchable and Procreate, which I really like, they do that really well as well. I said well too many times there. Oh well, I'm keeping it in. What about Ibez, Paint X, or Medibank? They're good apps, but I think for me, I just prefer the minimal interfaces. I like it when stuff just gets out of the way and I have more space to draw and less to think about and look for while I'm trying to change around my tools. But I will say that both of those apps are free. So if you're looking for that, they're good choices. 
All right, so no app is perfect. So let's go over some of the things that I didn't care for in Infinite Painter. So this app is free, but with in-app purchases. No problem there, no problem with that at all. But when you start using it, you're unlocking features a couple at a time, and that I thought was a little bit frustrating. I wish there was just a give us $10 and we will unlock everything for you option, but instead they're doing it like $5 here and $2 there. And when you get into the flow of something and then all of a sudden you go to grab a tool and it's like, hey, you gotta pay $2 more for gradients, you're like, oh, why is that not included in the other tool set? And it gives you this feeling of just being nickel and dimed a little bit. Just to be clear, I have no problem with paying for quality. I think the developers need to be paid, especially small developers who are doing good work. And in this case, I think there is a small developer doing very good work who deserves to get paid for that hard work they're doing. My real problem is just the beef with the way that the in-app purchases are laid out and are kind of piecemealed together like that. The other thing this app does that I don't care for is that your canvas size can't really get that big. And also the number on dues is limited to 10. But none of that really holds me back too much because it's still my favorite Android drawing app. Also, it is available on the iPad, so if you want to check it out there, you can totally do that too. And in that course I talked about at the top of the video, I go through several different illustration projects. I'm not just going through the app and saying, hey, this feature does this and this is how you do it. But I did think about using my slow teacher monotone voice, but I didn't. But I did want to walk through the tools and say, hey, here's a project I would use this tool on and this is how I would use it in the drawing that I'm making. So if you want to check that course out, there's a link down below. It is uh, only $10. Make sure you use the coupon down below and you're not paying full price. It's 50% off if you use that coupon. So check that out. So what is your favorite program? Which one do you really like? And I want to know why. I think that's the most important reason. Don't just tell me it's Ibez Paint X. Tell me why. Is it because of the price? Is it because of the tools? Is it because of the type of art you're doing? And does it help you do it better? That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. Let me know down below in the comments. That's all I've got. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.